I'm back working with this RF radiant energy receiving circuit, trying to get an understanding of everything that's going on. And I'm going to go over a few developments now in this video. This is the antenna connection I have right here. It's just branched off with a bunch of other circuits I have on this antenna wire that comes in right here from the window. And I'm tuning this coil with a ferrite rod now. I just slip that in there to where the LEDs get the brightest. That's too far in. Well, is that too far? Oh, right there. It's in resonance now with this copper mesh I have up here. It's kind of like a single plate capacitor. And this coil is wound on a piece of half inch PVC conduit. It's a tightly wound coil, a 32 gauge wire. And it is one inch in length. I don't know how many turns that is, but that's what I got I'm using right now. The ferrite rod in there is a lot easier to use. I got this close to resonance with the copper mesh up here, but then I can fine tune it with this ferrite rod. And I have two switching diodes right here. And this is what I'm using for a virtual ground right now. It's just a piece of wire. It doesn't even need to be on the ground. It's just a length of wire I had. I found that that works plenty good. And it doesn't need to be attached to anything or even on the floor. Just going to cut right there. Just laying on the top there, and it's working. And this right here, this insulated wire that goes through this mesh, that's my pickup wire. It's just ended right there, and this just leads into these two diodes and through all these LEDs. Previously, I was using a sheet of aluminum foil with a strip of copper tape along it, Insulated from the aluminum foil with some packing tape and I was calling it a single plate capacitor when I had it in my circuit. A circuit like this with a coil in resonance with a foil plate. I believe Tesla even called this a single plate capacitor. This is what we were working on in those other videos in the playlist. You might want to take a look at them if you want to get familiar with what was going on. If you're new to the channel. What I wanted to do, I wanted to try to reduce the size of this. And I wasn't able to do that by just, you know, folding it over and even leaving a space in between it because it would change the resonance with the uh, coil and it wouldn't work. The capacitance in some way was being reduced if you just try to fold it over. So I th was starting to think, well, it has to do, you know, with this spatial area. And the first thing I tried was this wheel right here. I got a strip of aluminum foil all around the circumference of this wheel. And the aluminum foil I have around here is about half as much as this big sheet right here. But the spatial area was about the same. And this did work. So the next thing I wanted to try, I want to try something different again. And I went with some mesh. I had a roll of mesh here that's used to... Just your stuff in holes, keep rodents out. And that's what I have up right here. And to pick up the signal that was radiating off this mesh, I just got some insulated wire stitch in between it. Now this mesh has very little solid surface area. It has about the same spatial area, but it doesn't need to be solid like I thought maybe it did to begin with, you know, with a solid piece of aluminum. And it's not really acting like, you know, a conventional capacitor. Even with this wire I have running through here, it's kind of stitched through here. I can't measure, the capacitance is so low between the mesh and this wire that I can't even measure it on my meter. It just needs to be in this radiating energy zone, it seems like to pick up the energy that we're getting. You know, before I thought maybe this was acting like a capacitor with, between the copper plate here and the aluminum foil, 
but that's not necessarily so. I'm not quite sure how that's working, but this is just some 20 gauge insulated wire that's picking up the energy to light these LEDs. So that's something new I've been thinking about and trying to get an understanding of what's actually happening here. Um, that somehow the RF radiant energy is kind of developed around this mesh and the wire just needs to be in that zone to pick up energy. Right now I have my meter set on microamps and I have it connected in between the coil and the antenna. I have it connected just right here. I wanted to see what current is being pulled off of this antenna. And that's what we're getting. 0 0.5, 0 0.6 microamps. I guess that's really not surprising. It's not much current. And it's coming from this frequency right here. 1.3, a little better, megahertz or 1360 kilohertz. Now before, that's where some of these radio broadcasting towers are at that I was looking at, at the distances and how much power they're putting out and then at night. I notice that this does reduce a little bit at night. Right now it's flickering because I got the meter hooked in between it. But I also have, still have, another circuit connected over here to the same antenna and at the same frequency these are still pretty bright and these are this is the old style i had this works i was just trying something else with the mesh and stuff and that's my virtual ground right there that's still going pretty good and this is the voltage i have between the whole circuit and the antenna 3.7 volts ac that's just connected right here from the antenna for this whole circuit. Now I have my meter set up to test the load of those LEDs. I got the current down here. See microamps, 55, 57, jumping around a little bit, 56 microamps. And this is the voltage. 10.4 volts that's across these leds i broke my my glue joint right there but i got it hooked up there so they're on and that's the voltages getting there and current is right there so that's the question i have where is that energy coming from off this set up the input was you know very very small and yet the current and the voltage to light these is quite a bit more so i have this coming off the antenna and this is going through the load I don't understand how this tiny amount of power can relate over to here. So I don't know. It's changing a little bit. Voltage is still there. I gotta fix this. It looks pretty bad now. I gotta re glue that back up to make my tuner like right here. This tuner, okay, about right there. What I use is this is just some high frequency ferret rod. This is a hot glue stick, and I just stuck it on the end, so my hand will be insulated from the ferret rod. And I also have other things off that antenna too. That LEDs there coming off. I've got earth ground. This is just a conventional. Full bridge rectifier circuit. I think it's just some kind of electro smog. I think I have some LE, four LEDs coming off of this circuit. Single plate capacitor there. Try the smaller coil here, and I got four LEDs coming off of this right here. 
Oh, plus my radio. So, I, I don't know what to think. Each, each of these circuits will take some current off the antenna. This one takes the most, and these just take, you know, fractions of micro amps. So, I don't know. Is, uh, am I pulling that much off the radio station, or is something else adding it up somehow? By gaining something from something else, I don't know. Well, it is possible I could be getting some false readings off my meters. I know when I put the current meter in between the antenna wire and the whole circuit, it was like showing 0.5 or 0.6 microamps. The meter was itself blocking a little bit, but say even if it was one microamp or two, it's still you know, that's still quite a bit less than 56 microamps at 10 volts at the load. And so I'm just, I'm kind of at a loss. I hesitate to say anything, but it sure is interesting. I think the antenna does have a lot to do with it and location too, I think. But <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I don't know what to think about that. And, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you found some of that free energy they discovered 100 years ago. But <laughs> I don't know. It's just I know there's going to be some current off an antenna, but I don't see how it's getting like it's getting amplified or transformed somehow. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave it right there for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your time.